Good afternoon. I'd like to welcome everyone here to our Wednesday night Bible study at Beverly Hills Baptist Church. Thank you for tuning in online. If you're our guest, we're excited for you to be joining us uh, this afternoon. Today is June the 3rd, and we are in chapter 5 of our Bible Doctrine study, which is the Doctrine of Salvation, or as known, Soteriology. And we are in part 44, which is the Doctrine of Repentance. Now, if you'd like a copy of tonight's study, please feel free to contact me personally or here at the church, and I would love to get a copy sent to you of our study. Now, what is repentance? Repentance is properly understood to mean a change of mind. A change of uh, the intentions from wanting to sin to not wanting to sin. That results in a change in action. It involves the decision to make a change of behavior and or attitude about something. Now, what we understand is that to repent means to make an intentional change. The idea is uh, making a 180. If you look at a circle, uh, it being a 360, if you are going in one direction, to repent means to completely change and go into the other direction. Now, biblically, repentance means to turn from sin with a heartfelt desire to change and to not do it again. Now, of course, desiring to never sin again and actually not sinning again always aren't the same thing. When we have the intentions, it's the heartfelt understanding that we don't want to sin, but we still do. We Christians often fall in our war and fail in our war with sin. We may have remorse over it and honest desire to not commit sin again, but sometimes because of our fallen nature and our profound weakness, we often fail to completely carry out our repentance. Nonetheless, by the grace of God, we are able to turn to Him yet again and receive the cleansing that is guaranteed through Christ. This does not mean that it's okay to go out and seek and sin and try to repent of it later. There is a difference between an honest struggle, which is a sign of regeneration, and a casual attitude about committing sin so that a person can repent later, which is a sign of not being regenerate. So when we talk about regeneration uh, and uh, in the idea of talking about repentance, when we speak of repenting, we understand that it is a heartfelt decision to change. It is not something that is done on the fly. Uh, we don't commit sins and then, oh, say, Lord God, I'm sorry. Sorry, I didn't mean to do that. It was an accident. It's not like that. When it comes to being regenerated, when it means to be brought to life in Christ, when it means a new life in Christ, it means that repentance is something that is heartfelt. Now, I want you again to understand as we have gotten into this that we have the best intentions and we may genuinely seek to repent, but that does mean that we will continue to sin. We do. In fact, that is sin nature. Uh, we may have a desire not to, but eventually we will sin again. And the only way to combat that, the only way to fight against that, is to continually seek Christ. Continually to seek after Him and to mold our lives after Him. And by doing so, as we uh, move and mold ourselves after Christ, then we seek uh, further holiness with Him and then we seek heartfelt repentance for when we do sin. And repentance is all about the attitude and not about the actions. Now, in the Old Testament, there are two main words that are rendered as repent or repentance uh, or repent. The first word is nakam, and it means to turn or to be sorry for, uh, to have regret. The King James uh, translates it as comfort 57 times, repent 41 times, comforter 9 times, ease uh, uh, once, and to be sorry, to be consoled, uh, to console oneself, to repent, to regret, to comfort, to be comforted. Now, the other word is sub, and this word is translated in the King James as return, uh, 391 times and to return again 248 times. So we see that this word as uh, repent uh, really means in the Hebrew means to return to God or to turn back. 
it brings in that idea of uh, going in one direction and then turning around and coming into another direction, going back the way you should be going instead of going astray. It is translated turn 123 times, turn back 65, turn away 56, restore 39, bring uh, 34, render 19 times, answer 18 times, um, recompense 8 times, recover 6 times, deliver 5 times, uh, put or to be changed 5 times, withdraw 5 times, and requiet 4. And so we can see that it has been translated a multitude of ways, but what it in idea is to return or to change a course of direction. Now, as you can see, there are a variety, a variety of ways to translate the word. But the basic meaning is to turn or to have an attitude change as to not want to do wrong again. Now, in the New Testament, we get the better understanding. Uh, there is one Greek word within the uh, Greek language translated into English that means repentance. And that Greek word is metanuo. Uh, now, metanuo comes from two words uh, in the Greek, and it brings the idea of to repent or to bring repentance. Now, it is derived from the basic word of meta, which means to change or to have a change to take place. And their Greek word nua, which is to exercise the mind, to think or to comprehend. And so when we put these words together, metanuo, it means to have a change of mind. And it brings into the understanding that repentance isn't something done uh, lackadaisically. It isn't something that's done uh, just on a course or on the fly or done to appease some angry uh, deity. It means to have a heartfelt genuine mind change. It literally means to have a change of direction. Now this is going to bring up an interesting question in which we're going to work through. When we talk about repentance and we talk about the idea of uh, repenting and turning away from and turning to God and away from sin, the question that brings up is, is repentance necessary for salvation? To answer the question, is repentance necessary for salvation? The answer is both yes and no. Now, it depends on what is meant by the question. If by asking, is repentance necessary for salvation, the person means that the sinner must first repent and have a change of mind and to stop sinning in order to get saved, then the answer would be no. Now, just follow along with me because I know what you're thinking. Uh, if it means that the, the person must stop sinning and completely change their mind, then the answer would be no. The reason would be that uh, because we are not saved from the righteous judgment of God by stopping sin and doing good, that in its boiled down state would mean works salvation. If we are to say that we must completely stop sinning, completely altogether turn direction and repent in order to be saved, then that means that is salvation that is uh, on our behalf, which is a works salvation. And we do not hold to that as the scripture teaches. We are saved from our sins by trusting in Christ, uh, who bore our sins in his body and on his body uh, on the cross. Uh, not by cleansing sin and doing what is right. Uh, now, Jesus, by hanging on the cross, cleanses us from our sins. Uh, he forgives our unrighteousness. It is only through faith in Christ that we can have eternal salvation, not uh, eternal salvation from faith in Christ plus me changing my mind and not doing wrong. It is not works salvation. We receive Christ, and we are then justified by faith. And it is uh, to the work of God to us to regenerate us, in which he enables us to turn away from our sins. So therefore, repentance is the result of regeneration, not the cause of it. Now let me explain it to you once again, as biblically as we understand it, and as it is taught within the scriptures that we are justified because God gives us faith. 
uh, we have faith in Jesus. That in return, when we have that faith in Jesus, brings in uh, a new life, uh, brings in regeneration, where we are brought to life. When we are then brought to life, we see the errors of our ways, and we repent and turn away from sin and turn towards God. So therefore, repentance is not the cause of salvation, but is the result of salvation. Because of what God works in me, I then turn away from sin and turn towards Him. A couple of scriptures that will help us to understand this. The first is Ezekiel chapter 36, verses 26-27. Moreover, I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit within you. And I will remove the heart of stone from your flesh and give you a heart of flesh. And I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes. And you will be careful to observe my ordinances. Again, as we see, salvation is the work of God alone and where he changes the hearts of men and women. And therefore, they then in return turn to repentance and repent of their sin. John chapter 1 verses 12 and 13. But as many as received him, to them he gave the right to become children of God, even to those who believe in his name, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor the will of man, but of God. And here we see that uh, he will give us uh, a right to become the children of God because we are born of him, not because of uh, any flesh and blood, not of anything that we've done, but because of his work in us. Uh, the wind blows where it wishes, and you hear the sound of it, but do not know where it comes from and where it is going. So everyone who is born of the Spirit, John 3, 8. And then lastly, James chapter 1, verses 17 and 18. Every good thing bestowed and every perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of lights, uh, with whom there is no variation, a shifting shadow. Uh, in the exercise of his will, he brought us forth by the word of truth so that we would be a kind of first fruits among his creatures. And so as we see these good gifts, uh, these uh, and especially the good gift, the great gift of salvation is through the working of God. And it is exercised through his will to bring salvation to mankind and is brought to us so that we will be the first fruits of many creatures. Now, this also brings into something else that we must understand. On the other hand, repentance is necessary for salvation in the sense that we cannot be saved from God's righteous judgment without having a change in our minds about sin, without turning from it and seeking to honor God. We must have a change of mind when we come to God, if our devotion to God, if our belief in God, if our uh, trusting in God and Him working in us does not bring a sense of change in our hearts and mind towards sin, then we are unsaved. Now, let me phrase it like this. If you who are listening, if you come to know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, and yet you did not have a change of mind about sin, and do not seek absolute repentance for the guilty that you feel of your sins, then you are not saved. You do not have a genuine understanding of how salvation works. You must have a change in mind. Now, there's some scriptures that go along with this. Uh, Jesus tells us in Luke 13 verse 3, I tell you, no, but unless you repent, you will all likewise perish. Just as Jesus' word said, unless you repent, unless you have a genuine, heartfelt change, you will perish. And Peter said to them, Repent, and let each of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Here again, as Peter says that they must repent, you must have a heartfelt change and be baptized as an outward sign to show that you have faith in Jesus. Uh, you must have this heartfelt to change for the forgiveness of your sins, and then you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Uh, if you do not, then you will not be blessed with the Holy Spirit because you do not have a, uh, a right understanding of how salvation works. Therefore, having overlooked the times of ignorance, God is now declaring to all men that everywhere that everyone should 
repent. Acts chapter 17 and verse 30. Uh, therefore, having overlooked the times of ignorance, the times and the sinfulness of man, God is declaring to all men everywhere that they are to repent. God is crying out to his children to have a change of heart and attitude, to see that they are lost and to see that they are sinful and to repent of their sinful, unrighteous nature. Repentance is most definitely a part of the gospel message. But we have to make sure that we do not make a mistake of saying that our salvation is because of our repentance. Again, our salvation is nothing to do of uh, what we have done, but all of what God has done in us. Again, we do not want to say that our salvation is a result of our stopping of doing what was wrong and turning to what was doing right. This would be salvation by works. This is a tricky issue among Christians as to whether or not to, uh, as to whether or not the unbeliever who is a slave of sin and who cannot understand spiritual things and can do no good is able to make a choice to stop sinning based on his sinful nature. Uh, we have to understand that uh, the sinful, uh, the unrighteous, that they have no uh, inclination towards good. For all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God, for no, not one is righteous. So in uh, the uh, sinful state, in the unrepented state of mankind, uh, they cannot seek after God. The unregenerate heart does not seek after God. It doesn't want anything to do with God. Uh, dead men do not seek after a living God. And so we see that God must make the first initiative steps. God must work within the person. He must provide salvation. And in doing so, he must make them to be regenerate. He must regenerate them. And in doing so, he brings to them the heart and mind of repentance. It would seem that the ability to repent must be granted by God. This can be seen in Philippians chapter 1 and 29, Acts 11, uh, 18, and 2 Timothy 2:25. It is by the work of God that we are able to repent because God brings it within us to be able to repent. So we have to be careful when uh, asked the question if repentance is necessary for salvation. The real question is, and the real question should be, is repentance the result of salvation? And the answer to that is an, a resounding yes. But repentance is also part of the message of salvation that commands people to repent. Because turning from sin is what is the right thing to do. And turning from sin is what God has commanded us to do. Sin is against the nature of God. And that's why God always commands everyone everywhere to repent. Just as he has also uh, commanded that you will be holy. Even though we cannot be holy. God is the standard of our perfection. God is the standard, not mankind. We can't measure our own perfection because we have none. God is the standard of perfection. And that standard is not lessened because of our inability. Therefore, repentance is a command, as is holiness. And we have to depend on God for both. God calls all men everywhere to repent. Uh, he opens up the hearts and minds of his children, uh, those whom he has called, uh, and opened the door for salvation to their hearts and minds. He calls them to repentance. And all those who proclaim to be Christians, all those who proclaim to be the children of God, must repent. They must have an attitude change and heart change. Because if they do not, then they are not genuinely saved. Now, I can't tell you, based upon looking at everyone around me uh, and to everyone I've ever met, I cannot tell you who is a genuine Christian who is not. And there's only one person in this world that I can absolutely vouch for, and that's me. And there is only one person that you can absolutely vouch for, and that is yourself. So what I encourage you now is to seek your own heart and mind and to see if you have a genuine heartfelt change. Have you ever had a genuine heartfelt change when you come to know the Lord? Do you have a disdain for sin and repent and turn away from it? Or do you actively seeking it, thinking that God will just simply forgive you? That's the difference between true belief and unbelief. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you that we can gather here to study you, your words. And we thank you that you have called us to repent, making us and calling us to be holy and to be that standard of which you are. Father, we absolutely pray and ask that you forgive us because we do not measure up. And the only way that we can measure up is through the righteousness of Christ. And so we say thank you 
for Jesus pouring out his righteousness upon us. And we praise your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We're so excited. Uh, I hope you have followed me all the way through to the prayer and now to this last announcement. We are very excited that in June 7th, coming up this first Sunday in June, uh, we will be gathering back together for uh, our worship service here at Beverly Hills in person. We will be in the Family Life Center. We will keep all social distancing practices and we will make sure that we have hand sanitizer and all those things to keep our parishioners and guests safe. But we are excited to be coming back to worship in person and we would love to see you there. Uh, if you uh, are able to come and you feel safe to do so, we encourage you to come and be our guest here at Beverly Hills. Uh, and we look forward to having fellowship back with our brothers and sisters and our church family. Thank you for joining in with me tonight in our doctrine study. May the Lord bless you and may the Lord keep you safe.